Like everybody, this is always back with the next part of our Ionic workshop series. So, so far we have created 14 videos where we have done our authentication UI in the last video. So, as I mentioned in the last video that we're going to be working on a backend where we can actually get the user to create an account, uh, be able to forget password or register himself. So, we're going to do that. Uh, using a backend service from a Google called Firebase. So this is going to be like a tutorial for Firebase as well. At this page, once you logged into Google Firebase account, you need to create a project. I'm going to create a project called Expense Tracker. So once you follow the prompt and create the project, click on continue. And there you go. I've got this Expense Tracker project. On the left, we have authentication, database, storage, hosting, and machine learning kit. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are already built for us. So we're going to first of all focus on authentication. So when I go to authentication page, here we have few options. We can have, uh, we can see the users, sign in methods, uh, templates. We got the usage of how many users that we have here. So we got about, uh, on a free plan, we got about 10K limit. Okay. In US, Canada and India, we got about 10K limit as well. Now we're going to go to sign in method. Now here we have few options where I can enable or disable how I want my, uh, users of the app should be able to log in. So we can have this something like, uh, a phone number enabled or email and password enabled as well. So I would like to go and enable this email and password. So it says allow users to sign up using their email uh, address and password. Our SDK also provide email address verification, password recovery, and email address change. Okay. So here we'll say enable and here it says email link password list sign in. We're not going to enable that for now. Let's just save this bit. Now, once our authentication is, uh, is actually enabled, we could actually utilize this bit now. So how do we, uh, get this thing in our application? I'm going to go to the template and here we've got this, for example, email address template here. We got this, uh, hello display name follow this address and he will basically uh, click on this. It will take you to your application and we will have a sign up. Uh, so what I want to do now, I would like to go to our application and install a package for it. Go to the documentation for Firebase. So click go to docs and here we have a documentation for platform specific. So we got the documentation for Android, for iOS, uh, get started for admins and we have a get started for a web as well. This is what we're going to be using because our application is a hybrid app. And here it's giving information how you can actually configure uh, and install Firebase through NPN. Now we're using Angular and Angular has its own package called Angular Fire. So I'm going to go to the Angular documentation and here if you go to the resources, you will see that there is a uh, angular fire package. So we go and find that. Let me just go here. Okay. This is the one. So let's click on that. And here we have this, uh, you know, angular fire package and I click here and it will take me to the documentation. So I'm going to use this command to install that. So let's go to the Python open terminal. I'm going to paste that command ng add angular slash fire. So it's going to install uh, Angular Firebase for me. And also it is going to actually set it up for me as well. It says Angular slash fire at 5.4.3, one package installed. Now it's actually updating package.json. So let's go to the package.json and let's see what we got here. So here it's installing Firebase. Okay. And also it's installing a couple more dependencies. Now we're going to go back to the documentation and see what we can get, uh, what we can learn from there. So here we got these two projects, as you can see here. Okay. I'm going to use this expense tracker project and it says it created firebase.json file and created 
dot firebase.rc file as well into our project okay so we got this firebase.json file and then this is the configuration file as well now let's go back to the documentation and see what it offers so we got this observable base use uh, power of rxs angular and firebase real-time binding we got authentication there uh, server data server side rendering and it also has a support for ngrx which is good push notifications there as well so this is good now it will tell you the 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 example but we're not gonna basically look at this i'm gonna go to the quick start guide now in the angle file quick start guide we're gonna go to this page so here we have a environment which i'm just going to uh copy this bit okay let's copy this go to pycharm and we're gonna go to environment.ts file all right and then here i would like to actually paste that file base here now here it needs some of my information from my account so here we've got this api key auth domain and database url project id and you know some other stuff that is required there now i'm not going to show you this page but let me just go back to the documentation for a second and i'm going to get you how you can find those information so if i go to your project you're going to go to uh settings here on this page click on this web where you see your apps click on that web bin and then you will be able to create a new app in your project and once you create that app you will be able to see all those details just copy and paste into our project and you will have your own app in your project with your own credentials there so you will need those i'm not going to show you mine so yeah just try to find some resources online if you don't know how to do it uh, it's fairly simple, just click on that, wait for the prompt and you'll get that. So we're back in Python. Here we're gonna have to initialize a Firebase module. Now we already installed Angular Fire package. So what we're gonna do is call Angular Fire module and call the function initialize app. And then you need uh, your, you know, your app credentials. So here I'm gonna bring in environment dot I'm going to call in, uh, that would be yes dot firebase. Okay. Now here I need to make sure that I import the right one. So that would be in my environments. Let's save this bit. Now at this stage, we have successfully initialized firebase. Now let's go to login module. So I'm going to go to login module and here we need to import angular fire auth module well hang on we're gonna need to have this you know authentication stuff in uh registration page login page and forgot password so instead of just importing that here i would like to import that into auth module and here i'm going to import uh let's just say angular fire auth module now this login page have access to angular fire auth now because that's what it's importing so i'm gonna just close few files here i'm gonna open login page okay now here in login page let's go and add ng on in it so you want to use implement let me just zoom in maybe a bit so let's implement Okay, let's uh, import this. And we're gonna have to have a function now. Let's say ng on init. And inside this, first of all, let's go into the constructor of this plugin page. And I'm going to create private, and I'm gonna name it fire art. And we're going to import angular fire art okay now here i would like to first of all log to the console and i'm gonna say uh this dot fire dot current user 
Okay, let's see if any current user is logged in. Now it says null. That's good. Now another thing I want to show you here is that once you log in, you have to have like a session that you keep track of that this user was logged in. Now let's just say that we want to log in with one particular user. So I would like to utilize this function now. Let's get rid of this to do. I'm going to log in. First of all, let's just log the form as well. So I'm going to use this dot file out dot out. And I say sign in with email and password. So this is what we enabled, right? Now I'm going to take email and password. So that would be this dot login form dot uh, actually. Okay, first of all, let's just get the values from our form. So here I'm going to say cons login form values, and we're going to set this dot login form dot value. Okay, and that should have now uh, this dot actually not now. So we're going to say login form values dot, and I'm going to grab email. And then I'm going to grab login form dot value dot uh, password. And then I'm going to uh, call it then and say response. And what response that we're going to get is going to be user credentials. So first of all, let's just log those. So I'm going to just log the response there. Okay, now let's just do something like in their app, I'm going to say a at abc.com and password, I'm going to type password 01. Login. And here I get this form, right? And then here you can see it says there is no user record uh, corresponding to this identifier, which means that our uh, basically Firebase is being initialized properly. Now we might want to create a user and then sign in with that user, right? So let's go and do that now. So we're going to go to register component and here we got this form, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, I would like to import, let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, I'm gonna create private fire auth and that would be angular fire auth and it says do register now and here we are going to grab name sorry not name but email and password okay so I'm gonna type here this dot fire auth dot auth dot create user with email and password and then we are going to use this dot register form dot controls dot oh, we don't need to get the control we just get the value and we can set dot email okay it's a bit weird but let's just do that for now we will improve this bit let's say value dot password okay I'm gonna bring that to next line. I'm gonna say dot then. Once the registration is done, give me the response. And I'm gonna log the response. Okay. Now it's got its intelligence there. Let me, there's something wrong here. So inside this bit, <clears throat> we'll do console dot log, and we'll just log the response there. All right, let's uh, let's try registering now. I'm gonna type here. I'm gonna type always, and I'm gonna say abc at abc dot com password zero one password zero one, and now I'm going to do a log here. Register. And it should say user additional information, 
password password and there's a user object came back okay that's good now i'm going to uh actually create a button here so actually not let's go and log in with this particular user now if i go back to login and say abc at abc.com and we do a password here let's do a login and there we go now this time we get the, a user object back with its token okay that's really good uh, now if I refresh the page for example I'm gonna just I'm gonna refresh this but before I do that I'm gonna type this code we say console.log this dot fire art dot Bot dot current user okay I'm gonna save this and it should reload to the login page and now it says null okay that's okay that's not a problem but I'm gonna try logging in now so I'm gonna say we see at abc.com and then do a password zero one let's do a login and I get to see, yep, it's been logged in. Now let's go to register page. Now I go to register page. You see that register component actually logged in the constructor, the current user. So that means something is there. Something is, is logged in actually. So it's again, same object uh, that basically gives me information about the user who's logged in. Uh, we got the token there as well. You got the refresh token is a metadata multi-factor uh, is anonymous it's false email we got that now we got a lot of information right so now it's time for us to create uh, a auth service where we will have some functions to log in log out uh, forgot password okay so let's do all that in the next video thanks for watching talk to you guys in the next one